Hey everybody, it's me again. Uh, it's been a couple weeks, I believe, since I made another video. So, figured I'll make another one. Today we're going to talk about the Stockman. Just going to show off some of these cool knives. Some of these, uh, this is a case, obviously. <clears throat> we got some uh, mini Stockmans and an old timer Stockman. I, I actually like the Stockman design. Um, three blade, uh, each blade you know, supposedly used to have a purpose like spade blade and your your usual blade and whatever, pin blade. Um, but nowadays, what's the purpose of needing all these blades, I guess? But I still think the Stockman is a really cool design. And I really like the mini Stockman because it fits in your pocket so great. The uh, this one is a uh, red bone, a pocket worn red bone. It's really nice. I picked this up at a Bass Pro Shop years ago. Got some tarnish going on there. Let's see if I can clean that. Nope. That's gonna have to need some attention there. Uh, but yeah, these uh, I picked this up at a Bass Pro. I forget what I paid. I used it for quite a while. Um. But they're great. They're really small. Um, really small, really. They're about the size of a peanut, maybe a slightly larger. And it's cool because you get three blades. Um, this is a white synthetic plastic. It's pretty nice. Uh, these two are both stainless. Um, this is carbon and that's carbon. This is obviously not a pocket worn. I don't think they really make, what's the point of making a plastic pocket worn? Very cool though, when they really polish up that bone, it's just, it's nice. It's the way they should all be, I feel. This is old timer. And this is a real old timer made in the USA, not a Chinese company that's making old timers. You know what? These are real collectible and if you really haven't thought about collecting USA made Schrade old timers and like Uncle Henry's and just Schrade branded stuff, now's the time. I think grab it, go on eBay, buy them, go to the knife shows, gun shows, wherever you buy knives at, the flea market, and get these old timers because they're becoming harder and harder to find in good condition. This one's brand new. Um, I mean, it's not brand new, but it's never been used or sharpened or carried um i picked this up at a cutlery store close to me and the guy said that um though some wife of some charade not executive but maybe a salesman or something he passed away and he she had boxes of these knives and um, a lot of them were rusted to pieces and some of them were um not usable but the ones that were he went and Kind of bought the whole lot, sorted through them, and uh, the good ones were, you know, placed out to be sold. And um, you could tell, I mean, this is the older charade. They're all carbon. Well, I don't know if they're all carbon steel. If they're not carbon steel, they'll have like a like a little plus or a cross on the uh, tang of the knife. And then you know it's stainless. But I believe for the most part, most old timers are carbon steel, so they will rust. Need a coat of oil on them. And they use a synthetic, I think it's called Durlin, uh handle. Now, some are um, made of bone. They're rarer. I think they even have some that are wood. Um, but uh, for the most part, I see them like this. And these were cheap knives at one time. You go to Walmart and pick them up for, I don't remember how much they were, maybe 8 or $9 for something like this, maybe $10. Um, but uh, those days are gone. And it's funny because... If I could go back in time, I would have bought every kind in the series. Uh, but while we're on this old timer, um, the TOT, I think it is. No, the 2OT. That's a real rare old timer. And um, if you ever see eBay, uh, sometimes those show up and they sell for big money. Apparently it was an old timer knife um, that's a lot like the uh, Washington Jack by GEC. Uh, that, that, that knife is, um, the GEC Washington Jack is pretty much what the TO, the 2OT, 
um, old timer was, and it was made like in the 50s. It was rather expensive, so no, not many people bought them. They're rare. Um, so check that out. It's kind of like uh, what the GEC is based off of. Um, it's a jackknife, not not a stockman. But while we were talking about old timers, I figured I'd uh, mention it. But yeah, that's a carbon knife, and that's really nice. So if you're if if you're not an old timer collector, grab them up. Oh, not least oh, a Schrade collector, I should say, Schrade USA collector. The, this one is a also a, a stockman. It's a case stockman, and this one's got uh, the CV blades on it. Uh, picked this up. Where was I? Big place in Tennessee. I forget the name of it. Smoky Mountain Knife Works, I think. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that place or not, but I don't know. Anyway, I picked it up, and they had it on a really good deal. And I'm thinking it was a good deal because maybe this grind was kind of, like, funky up here. Um, but uh, I don't care. I'll buy it. I'll use it. I carry it. It starts to tarnish CV steel. If you see that, it's tarnishing. Uh, CV steel... If you carry it, it, it will do this. But, you know, if some people really hate this, and uh, some people really like it. They force patinas on a knife using mustard or uh, sticking it into a lemon. Uh, I, I'm not really into the patina, so eventually this will get bad. I'll get a buffing wheel, and I'll just buff all this off. And um, that's what I do. I'm just not the patina kind of guy. Um... But if you are, you want to get the CV steel. And uh, I do like CV steel because I find it to be easier to sharpen. Uh, I use like a Spyderco ceramic, um, what do they call that, the sharp maker or something. Uh, and I have, I don't use, it, it places the sticks in a degree um, so that you could just kind of go down. Um, I don't use it like that. I actually just use the stones. Uh, I know, whatever, but um, that's what I use to sharpen, and I find that carbon steel is a little bit easier for me to sharpen than, say, um, 420 stainless, uh, but yeah, Stockman knives, uh, three blades, usually you can um, tell Stockman knives because they have three blades, uh, I believe this one's called a sheep's foot blade, um, Mm. I think that might be a spade blade. I don't remember. I read somewhere that they say a sheep's foot blade looks like a sheep's foot, but I don't see that. I um, also heard that they're there to cut sheep's foot. I like to trim something. No, I'm not a stockman. I don't work in a farm. So if you know, just leave a comment. Maybe explain it. Um, the spade blade apparently got its name from Spain animals and uh you know that kind of makes sense so maybe it is there is a use for cutting on a sheep's foot i don't know um but yeah this is a basically this is like a farm tool you know every stockman would have a stockman i guess that's why they named it that and uh you know nowadays things are a little different and obviously things are different because i believe a stockman would be a lot larger this is like a medium-sized stockman as well as this one and these are small these would be useless in any practical farm you know besides cutting string you know or twigs or some light whittling uh i do know case makes a large stockman uh and you can find some made by like i believe gec made some and uh queen if you, those are you know um they uh they're, they were farm tools and you know of course now obsolete farm tools but nonetheless that's what they were and that's what they're named you know their purpose uh, but you know with changing times you get small stuff like this and I mean I, I dig it you if you're bad at sharpening knives you can always just buy a stockman and once you use up all these blades then you can sharpen them and uh, <laughs> you know but um Th then you should probably go for a congress because then you would get at least four blades usually so which we should do a video on a congress i like congress i i enjoy knives with multiple blades because you get to see the craftsmanship of how they stack and how they bend a lot of slip joints 
well, I'll, yeah, I mean, slip joints in general. This is not a straight blade. You can see it's clearly bent. Um, this one's straight, but this one's bent so that can fold over so those can lay down next to it. It's, um, it's what makes slip joints unique and fun, and um, they're kind of art, you know. Uh, in the world of pocket folders that zip out and, uh, you know, auto-assisted and you have CNC machining, you get an old world craftsmanship with something like this that um, I honestly appreciate. Uh, you get, <laughs> I mean, it's a bent blade, but it's, this is nice, you know. It's just nice to see the way it was, the way it is back in the day. You can see it here too. And of course, when you have like a Congress knife with even more blades, um, you know, you get more stacking and bending uh, to make them fit. And, you know, this is what's nice. Bone handle, this is a, um, what do they call this? A uh, sawed, saw cut amber bone, I believe. And of course, these are like a laser etched into the knife, USA and Case logo. It's kind of cool. There's no uh, badge on here. Very neat. Nickel silver bolsters on all of them. Very cool. I've seen this one. I thought it was nice. I like white scales on knives. And I was like, man, I can have this. Plus it has the uh, Ithacas. So, I'm like, well, that's cool. I'll definitely carry this. So, you see how they all stack. In a perfect world, they wouldn't touch. They would be bent a little bit more like that. But, it's not a perfect world. And that's another thing you got to remember with, you know, with when you're comparing these to modern knives, you this is old world craftsmanship build. You can't exactly say, well, these blades touch or this, this spring sticks out a little further. There's a, you gotta have a little room for error here. And I understand collectors like me, I'm picky. Sometimes I have to go, well, it ain't that bad. You gotta remember somebody put this together by hand. This is not machine made and then assembled. I mean, yes, it's machine made and yes, it's assembled, but there is a piece of hand build quality into these knives that, that you have to give some leeway, some error. You will get sometimes springs that are proud or recessed or you'll have uh, blades touching in the manner of this, and you will get blade rub. That is the nature of the beast. There's the blade rub. You're going to have scarring like that. It's just the way it is. And yeah, you can um, you can buy a forty dollar or thirty five dollar knife and complain about these features, but what do you what do you expect? You know, now if you bought a $450 custom, yeah, I would want it to be perfect. And the more money I spend, like a GEC, you know, if I spend $110 for something, yeah, I want it to be pretty close to perfect too. But even then you have to leave exception. It's just the nature of the beast of these things. And that's what makes them cool. I mean, they are, these are truly relics, honestly. I mean, this is what your great grandfather. This is what the, slip joints is what George Washington carried. So these are a timeless knife, but they are from another time. Um, and I, that's what I think they're cool. That's why I think they're just unique and fun. And that's why I make videos about them and buy them. There's something about them. But the Stockman knife, three blades. I'm pretty sure they make uh, different ones. Buck makes a, a Stockman knife too. It's very large, but I had a few um, that I went through to buy, and I've always found like the the springs are kind of a little weak, not really snappy enough. Um, but that's just me being picky. Uh, usually, almost all of these they have a a, a, a spring that is have some great tension that holds them down and everything. I haven't really had any luck with the Buck knives they always seem to have a weak spring open and closing but um or at least the ones that i've seen have 
but yeah, this is the Stockman. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, subscribe. Um, check out uh, my other videos and um, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Uh, maybe maybe you guys are want to request a video or something. I don't know. Leave a comment saying what you have. I, obviously, I can't review any knife. I can't go out and spend a lot of money for a pocket knife um, just to make a video. But if I have it, I'll make a video, see what interests people out there. All right, y'all have a good uh, weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.